So in this problem, we are given a magnetic field, which is defined here. It's just a cosine function, and it's uh, defined in the z direction. And then we're also given uh, a closed path, and it's defined by these six points here. And so if we graph that path, uh, it looks something like this. I didn't want to try to attempt to draw it, so I, I had it pre-drawn here. And so you can see uh, from this, let's, let's, let's look at this, each point. So 0, 0 is here. Uh, this point here is located right there. This point here is here. This point here, here, so on and so forth there, and then back to the origin. So it creates this this contour here, this, this closed line uh, path. It goes like that. And then if we bound that by the XY plane, you can see they've hatched it in to include uh, all of this area here. So this is what we're dealing with. And so they're asking us to find the induced EMF around that path. So, uh, we need to recall then EMF. How do we how do we determine that? So uh, electromotive force EMF. We recall we can calculate that by integrating around the closed contour uh, the E field. That's a vector dotted with the path or the line integral. And again, that's a that's a vector as well. So in this case, we don't have an E-field, so then we want to utilize Faraday's law. So Faraday says that this is also the same as the uh, time derivative of the integral of the uh, magnetic field, again, a vector, over some defined area. And again, that's gonna have a vector associated with that. So it's over that surface. So in this case, um, our magnetic field is defined only in the Z direction. So in this graph here, the Z direction is straight up. So it's just this closed area. So then really what we're only concerned with uh, if we were to redraw this, this is X and Y, and these are the points of one. We were, we're only concerned with this square, going from zero to one in both X and Y. We don't really care what's happening in the Z direction. So the fact that this goes up as it goes around has no bearing on our problem because uh, that's in the same direction as Z, so the dot product uh, of those two is going to be zero everywhere. So we're only we're only worried with uh, this cross-sectional area, which is this area in here, which is the square. So if we were to write that out mathematically, uh, then what we would have is this is going to be equal to, again, just continuing the EMF equation here, the negative time derivative integrated. We're going to go x equals 0 to 1, and we're going to go y equals 0 to 1. Again, we have to define this uh, surface area, ds, and so it's an x and y. And then our magnetic field, the definition of that, <coughs> which from uh, up here is b0 cosine omega t, uh, and then we're going to have AZ, and again, that's a unit vector, and that's going to be dotted with DX, DY, again, this unit vector AZ. So the AZ dotted with the AZ gives us 1. So these cancel out to 1 because of the dot, the dot, because of the dot product. The next thing we notice is that uh, our function is not dependent on x or y. So when we take these two integrals, 
uh, what we are left with then is negative d dt, and it's going to be x, y, cosine omega t. And again, that's evaluated from x equals 0 to 1 and y equals 0 to 1. Well, when x is, and y are 0, uh, these go to 0, and when they're 1, they're just 1. So then we're just left with negative d dt times the cosine omega t. And utilizing our calculus and setting our u equal to omega t, uh, again, it's just a calculus one problem then, and I oh, forgot it might be zero. Um, what we're left with then is b0 omega times the sine of omega t. Again, just calculus one problem at that point. So then this is our EMF uh, with this scenario.